Hi guys, I'm Sam and welcome back to my channel, Unity of Life. And today, instead of talking about F1 like we have been doing, we are actually talking about animals. <gasps> I know, this is the whole videos that you've been waiting for so long for me to do. Because if you really remember in the very first video that I did, which was an introduction to my channel and my potential business, was that, and I introduced you to myself, was that I am obsessed with animals and I have spent the last six years looking at animals and research and learning all I possibly can about them and I am still going to continue next, well this year in September for a whole year when I do my masters. So if you remember the second video that I did is that I did a very brief history on Formula One and when I did that brief history I did mention that the reason that we have planes which led to the F1 cars was because of animals and if you saw that you remember I showed you my little crow Edgar who oh, it's, it's, it's not a real crow <laughs> he was a Halloween decoration in case anybody thinks there's a bit of animal cruelty going on but I did show you the skeleton of um, Edgar so this video is going to explore other designs that have been inspired by animals that help us. So I called this animals and engineering um, because a lot of it is a, a lot. There's a lot of all, um, engineering going on and there's a lot that we need to be thankful for for animals. So I'm a little bit more in my comfort zone um, talking about animals than I am with F1 because I know I love quite a bit about animals and I'm hoping that's going to show um, through. I know much more about animals than I do um, from the one um, but that doesn't mean that I'm not passionate to um, see more females driving and more people of colour driving as well because that would be fantastic anyways let's begin with the great things that we have to be thankful to animals for so the first one that I found is very peculiar it's something that you wouldn't think that you'd ever be thankful for uh, and that's a mosquito right you didn't think that there would ever be a day that you would be thankful to a mosquito because the um obviously they, they can cause us a lot of problems in the infect our blood and we can get really really ill however their little uh, tube uh, that they bite us with is actually being looked at and surgical needles have been um designed from them as you, if anybody's had an injection, you know, it's not pleasant, it's not nice. And some of these injections, they, the needles on them are quite thick and horrible and long and nasty and others are quite thin. Um, so scientists are using the, mos the mosquitoes' sneaky little biting abilities to make injections a lot less painful for people. Because for some reason you don't know you're being bit by a, a sneaky little mosquito. Um, so if they can make injections a lot less painful, then more people are probably going to want um, are going to be up for being vaccinated against things. Especially in the climate that we find ourselves in where, you know, vaccinations is very important for us to be able to live go back and live our lives as normal as possible. It'd be great when we don't have to wear, wear masks anytime soon. So researchers and engineers in a university in Japan, they've been taking cues from these mosquito needle-like mouths. Um, so apparently th this needle, it also vibrates slightly at about 15 hertz and it mimic mimics the real um, bite of a mosquito and it actually eases the needle into your skin um, easier and causes a lot less pain which you would think is a bit weird because it's vibrating that would probably possibly cause, cause more pain but it doesn't seem to and this has been tested out and it has proved that this needle has worked falsely um, I'm not sure how available that particular needle is because it didn't go into details and that but there you go you have something to be grateful to a mosquito for and nobody ever thought that okay another really fascinating one was fireflies 
Um, I don't know if you want to take a guess of what fireflies have inspired. Just wait to see if anybody here I can hear anybody saying. No, okay. So it is LED light bulbs. So if you did say LED light bulbs, then well done. You got that. You were correct. If you didn't say LED light bulbs, then I'm sorry. You you got it wrong. <laughs> Pay attention. You'll find out. You you learn some new things. So fireflies, they helped actually make these little LED light bulbs much more effective, right, efficient. We, we have them, but, you know, when they looked at these fireflies that have these natural lights, it was a lot more effective. So the bugs, um, in case you're not aware, they're these like, little insects that seem to have a light bulb in there as their bomb area. <laughs> Um, and if you've ever seen The Princess and the Frog from Disney, you, there was a firefly called Ray, I believe he was called, and he fell in love with a star um, and he got to be with him in the end when he sadly dies, which is spoiler alert, sorry if you've never seen that film, uh, however it's been out for quite some time, so I assume most people have seen it. Anyway, so these little lanterns on these bugs they have these little micro structures um and there's in it this causes some tiny little pro projections that release the light there's a lot of there's a lot of big scientific words here that i'm trying to miss out for my sake because i can't pronounce them in front of a real sake otherwise this is not going to be a fun video and you'll end up getting a headache trust me after three years of doing a science course you would get a massive headache uh, sitting there in a two-hour lecture listening to somebody bang on about these things. So, researchers from the Penn State, they found that they adding these microstructures to the surface of these LED lights that we use in our homes, which typically have a symmetrical projections and not an asymmetrical projections like the fireflies. It allowed more light to escape, making them more effective in improving the light extraction by a whole 90%. We also, another really weird, really, really, really strange one. Um, so, number three on our list was muscles. Muscles. So, I don't know if anybody's ever been to the, sh the shore as a, a child and there's these rocks and there's these like it looks like a little shell stuck to the rock and no matter how much you push you shove you try to pull it off it just doesn't go off right that's a muscle it that's what is under that shell it's a muscle and of course we're looking at adhesives with muscles because they are very very sticky um so this this under these little underwater mosques have they inspired the scientists to make really strong adhesives in the market, which will come in handy if you ever need to um, stick I don't know, something to your wall rather than using a nail. I'm not very good with DIY. That's not really my forte, but at least I know how to hammer a nail into a wall and hang a picture. <laughs> I know the basics. I will survive. So these researchers, they, they cracked at how these muscles seem to attach themselves to wet surfaces. Um, because when I, when I mentioned about the rocks and them being stuck to the rocks, the rocks do generally tend to be quite wet. And they, they do live in the sea. And the sea is really wet because it's water. I feel like I'm sitting in the obvious here. <laughs> um, so they've they've tried to replicate this adhesive uh, into an adhesive and what these uh, mosques, these uh, muscles do rather uh, to be able to create some really good strong glue and send that off and into the market for people to buy. So. Number four was a woodpecker's skull. So back, back to two birds. I don't have a woodpecker to show you. Um, but these woodpecker's skulls actually inspired black boxes. So if you're a wedding producer, where in England, if you have learnt to drive and you are under the age of 25, you are told that you really should have a black box in your car 
and so you're 25 um the, which records the speed that you're driving when you were driving where you were driving um when you break and if you do break how hard you were you were breaking and it gives you a lot of data and these black boxes are also found in planes and they're used in planes to figure out why this plane crashed fingers crossed if you're on a plane and you're going on there it isn't going to crash because nobody wants that um so they looked at these birds schools these woodpecker schools because they, they wanted the black boxes to be pretty much indestructible okay if you're going through the wreckage of a plane or you know a really bad car crash you need that black box to survive to figure out what exactly went wrong and try to build a picture up so you can learn from that and hopefully that it won't go wrong again so why a woodpecker skull so woodpeckers as you know they hit their head against the, a tree the, the well their beak on this tree and it could, makes all these vibrations and it encourages these um worms and tasty little trees to come out of the trees and the woods and they can eat so you know their skulls take an awful lot of impact for such a tiny little creature and yet they're fine if we were to do that we would probably knock ourselves unconscious and give ourselves concussion and where these birds that they're, they're fine and they can go about their day-to-day -day life and so it's all because of their skulls they have these built-in shock absorbers and scientists are still in this natural design for these aeroplane black boxes um in california and one university they used video and ct scans of these woodpeckers and they discovered that their skulls are designed with four structures that absorb in a, a mechanical shock and their beaks they also found they have an area which is filled with this spongy um sort of fluid and that it works to inhabit the vibrations and concussions so it kind of means the force that's going into the skull into the brain is a lot less severe than what is the force going into the beak into the first place so a very very strange one uh, at number five here is a candle's nostrils hmm and it's um, to do with salt water distillation. So you're probably wondering what the heck is going on here. Well, let me let me explain. Okay. So camels they live in the driest climates on Earth, e.g., the desert. There's not a lot of water. There's not a lot of food. Uh, there's a lot of sand and a lot of heat so they could not live in a desert but these animals have adapted to live in such climates where other animals uh, would do not succeed so scientists have taken a hint and the camels they conserve water by cooling exhaled air during the night don't know how they did manage to do that but um, and this extracting water vapor from the exhaled air and absorbing and hosing onto the water molecules from the surrounding air so that helps to keep them cool um, during the day because they don't really need to keep cool uh, during the night in the desert because it's absolutely freezing during the night in the uh, desert it's weird it goes from one extreme to the next so researchers in the Sahara Desert they're using the same techniques to remove salt from salt water to use on plants and to cool the ground water to evaporate warm sea water which is then content condensed in a salt free form um, i'm not quite sure why but there you go so another one was hummingbirds and not quite how you my thought you may think that that might have something to do with a drone it does not it's to do with a helicopter yep that's right a helicopter 
So these hummingbirds are, you are fascinating tiny little birds that actually have the ability to fly backwards um, and hover in place, which are quite a few birds do not have the ability to fly backwards and do find it hard to hover in one place which makes them rather similar to helicopters because apparently helicopters you can fly them backwards and they could hover as well apparently I don't know much about helicopters so researchers from the Stanford University uh, and another university that I have no idea how you pronounce the name of they published a study after tracking um, tracking some wings of 12 different species of home birds and found that the bird's ratio of their wing length to their width determined their ability to sustain hovering power which is very impressive for a tiny little bird specifically from birds with larger aspect ratios so 3.5 to 4 millimeters i think for hummingbirds and they use less power to do to stay hover and to fly backwards and engineers hope this information can help um to improve helicopter design number seven on our very long list um i believe wow uh, okay there's quite a few on this list there's there's um 33 we're already on number seven and this video is going to be really long at this rate so we're going to speed it up a little bit number seven uh is giraffes because they have this good uh blood pressure sustainability because their head is really far up here and their heart's right down here and in any other animal if they put their head down to drink it could kill them um, however giraffes have counteracted that and it is very fascinating um, so giraffes are some of the tallest animals on earth which I hope you are aware um, and it means that their blood has a lot of area to circulate around and get around uh, so the size of a giraffe's heart and feet are twice the size of that of a human's. That's huge. Then again, they're much bigger than a human. Yet they also have smaller call. They have smaller calf muscles. So, uh, and no moving towards minimal ankle joint movement. However, <laughs> the skin is extremely tough, uh, and it doesn't have any elasticity to it, and that creates a rigid sleeve that optimizes the ven venous return i don't know what that is on about the blood's return i would have thought so scientists have used this to co create a compressive system for human suffering um from like like ulcers and other things that i cannot pronounce to say in my life but other um blood related illnesses that do blood pressure so Cods, uh, they they use for antifreeze and blood banks. Interestingly enough, um, so scientists found that the Arctic cod had developed an evolutionary mechanism that keeps them from freezing in the icy waters they inhibit inhabits, which is just absolutely fascinating. So the cod they kept from freezing because they have actual antifreeze proteins. Mm, you had me antifreeze proteins in their body. Um, and that circulates their blood to keep it in liquid form and not to freeze into a block of ice because that's it's not very good is it you're going to be dead and you're not going to be able to get very far if you're dead so this has led researchers at warwick university to create a new plumber to pres preserve blood called polyviny alcohol that acts like an antifreeze to prevent any freezing with which can kill some cells. The freezing that is not the um, antifreeze that they created. So cat's tons, it has been found, can actually help with cat's allergies. So if you're allergic to a cat, you've got a cat to be thankful for um, treating your allergy with their tongue. Really weird. No, the cat's not treating you with its tongue, but anyway. So if you're allergic to cats, it's likely due to their hair. And it's the same for dogs. 
So now scientists are using cats themselves to compact cat allergies by taking cues from designs of the cat's tongue. So anybody seen a cat's tongue? They've got these tiny little spines within the tongue and they've got like little hooks that grab the fur when they're grooming themselves because they, they do take a lot of fur out when they're grooming them. So scientists have taken the design to create a new brush uh, and this brush is apparently the they had a paper published on it that explains the brush is studied with small curved flexible spines that remove loose hair or fur from humans and felines alike but can clean the simple and can be cleaned with a simple swipe of a finger possibly making cats less uh, you've been less allergic to a cats by removing this access fur and dander so Anybody who surfs, you've got otters to thank. See otters, they inspired wetsuits. So apparently scientists at the MIT, not sure what that stands for, they, they have made otters fur in a study published in a journal about physical review of fluids and they created this fur like rubber pelts that use the same mechanisms that otters use to keep warm. And that and it traps the air between the individual's hairs and when the water which traps the warm pockets of air in their dense fur and that keeps them all nice and clean and warm and they don't again they don't freeze to death so humpback whales fins have helped to inspire wind power weird i know so humpback whales are one of the largest animals on earth and yet they move with speed thanks to momentum of their large designed flippers because these are huge animals so humpback things have been studied and modeled for the wind turbines because of the turbular so that they've got bumps that are found on their fins which help the aer aerodynamic improvements a company called Whale Power, ironically enough, found that the turbulas leave a 80% improvement in lift, a 32% reduction in drag, and allows for a 40% increase in, in angle of attack over smooth flippers. They're using this to design wind turbines with the increased efficiency, which also has the potential to improve the safety and performance of airplanes, fans, and more. So plant burrs and dog hair has helped us um, be inspired for Velcro. So there was a dog walker who invented Velcro uh, and he's apparently Swiss. Um, and he found that in 1955, studying how the burrs got stuck to his dog's hair after a hunt in 1941, that he could design these um, this velcro from the burrs that were this hook shaped under a microscope and found a fabric that would hold the exact shape. So that's how we have velcro. So butterflies wings anti conflagratory money technology. I might not be saying any of that right but um, so this oh sorry counterfeit money is being busted thanks to butterflies a project called n-o-t-e-s from researchers at simon fraser university studied butterfly wings and their in indecided scene of costa rica morph butterflies they created a technology using nanoscales light inferior instructors create an anti like stamp it which is more difficult to crack on a hologram and it can be printed not only on banknotes but a whole range of other objects too and it's very hard to duplicate apparently so that's how you uh, are getting found out with these fraudulent money elephant trunks have design inspired the design of bionic arms and if nobody's ever seen a picture of this i suggest you look it up because it looks amazing it is an absolutely awesome design it's the strangest looking thing ever but it is just fascinating so an elephant's trunk you're not aware it's um 
it's a signature feature of an elephant, it's what makes an elephant an elephant, um, but it's also a masterpiece um, of evolutionary design with over 40,000, that's right, 40,000 muscles there. Not a single bone is found in an elephant's trunk. So German scientists from, from a company, they've used the trunk to develop a new biotic arm that can aid a, the handicap or assist with heavy lifting in agricultural businesses, for example. So these robotics have always been bound to the limitations of computers of the time, but as computer technology continues to evolve, more complex calculations for a wide range of movements has become much more possible. <clears throat> and the capability of flexibility um, in the movement, it's given way to more advanced designs like this biotic elephant trunk styled arm. Uh, so this, a new bio, biorobotic handling system based on the elephant's trunk created by some German engineers it has been helped to uh, assist the um, people who maybe be uh, in wheelchairs or maybe not have any arms um, and has also helped with heavy loading expanded and contrasting by inflating or deflating air sacs with each vertebra so there you go. This is the one I don't like. I don't want to be thankful to spiders. I don't like them. I'm petrified of them. They're horrible little things. But for the spider's web, which is created by those blasted little things, <sighs> it's created bird-resistant glass. Does anybody know birds are a little bit silly and um, they they see the glass and they think that they can fly through it and they just go they smack into it and they can die and they can cause some things so apparently these spider webs are particularly the everywhere in nature where birds do exist unfortunately there are some horrible massive spiders that do eat birds um, ugh. It's, it's nightmarish uh, but scientists notice the webs go on harm from birds in flight I don't know why, but there you go. So, while many windows unfortunately do not, so scientists uh, decided that they were going to look into an orb with the spider's webs, which they build their webs with ultraviolet silk cloth clogs. They found that it has a reflective properties that protect the web. And this has then led to bird protection glass so that with this ultraviolet that birds uh, can see reflection from, they're going to stop crashing into your window and causing little marks. So we've got the albatross for drones. I mentioned drones before with hummingbirds. So the albatross is it, it's a seafaring bird uh, that truly does song. Which again, it's uh, not that common for birds, and this basically means it really has to flap its wings to fly, so that it conserves a lot of energy. So instead, it uses the wind to fly more than six hundred miles a day. That's a lot. So the researchers at this MIT they've been using this flight design to develop drones. So there you go. Shark skin is next on my list, and that was being used for US Navy ships apparently. So sharks glide through the ocean thanks to their silky smooth skin which has been influenced the US Navy to look to the skin in a way to prevent microorganisms like barnacles from sticking to the sides of their ships. The shark skin covered with tiny little v-shaped scales which is uh, called dermal to Identical. I, you don't know, forget that. That's probably just me butchering words. <laughs> um, which helps sharks fend off these microorganisms. So they've used this to try and prevent barnacles from sticking to the ships, and it optimizes optimizes the vessel's performance and reduces fuel costs, which is great. Uh, 
so termites for ventilation systems so africa is one of the hottest places on earth and it has it has massive ty uh, termite bounds uh, and they exist in these dry climates and they do remain cool so scientists are still in the design ideas from these tiny little pests because they can be pests um, to help keep fields in well ventilated areas so they found that the mounds have large insulated central chimneys surrounded um, by these buttress that during the day are heated moving the warm air up and out of the chimney and keeping the cool air within so they're hoping that they can use these chimney buildings to help ventilate human houses now i thought this one was quite entertaining actually it was quite fascinating as well and that is the gecko's eyes for camera lenses and contact lenses so these lenses may hold the key to improving visual aids for humans they are one of the few animals that can see color at night it's a shock and their eyesight is almost 350 times more sensitive than a human's which is very impressive so researchers from the London University found that the geckos only have a higher density of cones in their retinas. So going back to school, um, when you learn about in biology the about cones in um, eyes. Uh, so this these these more cones, these high density of cones means that they can detect more specific light waves. Researchers are hopeful this can improve camera lenses as well as the development of multifocal contact lenses in the future which would help people clean fish for better suction suction cups so clean fish are a small variety of tropical fish that mostly inhabit rocky shores and coral reefs have inspired biologists to create a better suction cup marine biologists who are reverse engineering the suction mechanism that the creatures use to stick themselves to rough rocks to keep from washing away the tide they even get stick to dry surfaces the cling fish inspired suction cups can hold hundreds of times its own weight which could prove helpful in picking and packaging produce creating better robotic grippers or recovering um architectural finds uh an abrano fish i couldn't don't think i'm pronouncing that very well but they've improved body armor so the u.s air force studied how these amazonian fish can survive in the same waters as schools as deadly piranhas dun, dun, dun. the amparant a slow moving torpedo shaped fish should be an easy prayer for a pack of carnivorous fish but it isn't thanks to the cell scales it evolved over millions of years this air force hopes studying the scales could lead to better protection for humans and airlines again with spiders but spiders and ants and they've apparently inspired unsinkable metal so unsinkable probably isn't the best words to use when talking about ships um yeah you know when it came to the titanic the ship that wasn't going to ever sink hmm try telling that to all the people that lost their lives in that ship that day so researchers at the university of rochester have designed a new type of metal that actually does float no matter how much you try to prod it under the water they even tried puncturing the metal and it still wouldn't capsize so the researchers have worm inspired by spiders and fire ants that can float or skim on the surface of the water for long periods of time but just how did they do it so the answer apparently is that they trapped these air bubbles so they create under so the, these aquatic spiders they uh, create underwater webs shaped like a drone by filling it with air with the super hydrobonic legs and abdomens and fire ants for ants for their part create a sort of raft by trapping the air um, with their little bodies as well so camel toes right um and i do mean the actual toes on a camel and nothing else 
Um, so that was these Luna Rover tyres. So camels make on make it onto the list yet again. These fascinating desert creatures. So in Brigstone is developing a special type of tyre that makes the two lobed toes of a camel. So the tyre which was introduced at uh, I believe this year's or a few years ago, um, custom electronic show is it's is comprised of two lobes of these brown stills and it is designed to be able to easily track over hills of fine grained ob abdesive lunar dust tests in a stimulated lunar environment which soon confirmed whether camels will be just as helpful on the moon as they are on earth so there you go camels are helping her uh, tires on the moon we are nearly nearly there now so solar paneled bats inspired spy planes so bats have unwittingly become the inspiration for the government's surveillance device the united states military commission of the combat from the university of michigan college of engineering given them a five-year 10 million dollar grant to develop the design fitted with a solar panel in its transplant parent head the six inch spy plane has wings shaped like those of the flying mammal of a bat and the plane must be able to collect large amounts of surveillance data while running only one water power which isn't an awful lot so bird skulls again so we've already had a hummingbird skull in not hummingbird sorry woodpecker skulls specifically but now they teach a general bird skulls they inspire lighter stronger building materials so skulls in general are extremely impact resistant structures and extremely light at the same time when they don't have any brains inside of them <laughs> as they protect the most important organs of an animal's body and this performance and physical property can be applied in structures to the agricultural designs says um andreas harris who has studied the animal buzz particularly bird skulls extensively in a bit to design a highly effective bio inspired surface so hopefully this helps um make buildings lighter and stronger materials and also be then applied to cars so bullet trains have a nose like a kingfisher being again with birds birds are just absolutely fantastic and we have a lot it seems to be thankful to birds for so the kingfisher dives into the water from the air without making a splash mostly thanks to its highly effective shift beak in a stroke of genius engineering and bird enthusiast i don't know how to pronounce his name um realized that the same ship could solve an annoying problem faced by japan's ultra fast bullet trains which could allow booming sound like thunderclap whenever they exit a tunnel the nose of the plane was pushing it at uh, the uh, air at high speeds creating the walls the wind not only to make loud sound but also to slot on the train um so the kingfishers inspired the train nose and it limits this problem and it makes the trains up to 20 percent more fuel efficient as well so apparently we've also got bio-inspired computer tech cues from a cat's brain. Sure, computer tech has advanced a lot in recent years, as we all well know. Um, however, there's these super cute computers still can't recognise human faces as well as cats can. So cats are, are brainier than computers when recognised and recognising a human's face apparently. So the University of Michigan has decided to study the feline brain in order to develop this intelligence of this computer so they can find out more about um, how a cat's brain works and it can process the um, human's face and they can apply that to computers. So we'll have computers that have biomatic things like your phone. Great. Something else to tell me that it is not my face and be very rude because it is my face and I haven't changed it and I haven't got a mask on or any glasses on so I don't understand why it can't read my face half the time but there we go. So this one I found was very interesting especially in today's climate because bats are, they get a bad rap however 
A bat sonar navigation can help the blind get around. It doesn't have to be a cool physical features that relieve real in its inspiration, but the ultra kin wouldn't be possible without the smooth the way the bats get around in the pitch blackness. In the same way that bats can see in the dark using ultrasonic echoes that reveal the location of obstacles. Okay, so these blind users, these ultra kin, it warns the blind users of objects that are in their path by using these ultrasonic radar that we are getting from bats. So apparently there's, we also have a robotic swift, a robo swift aeroplane and it's an ordinary bird apparently. So here's yet another intervention from a bird, from a flying creature. It's above your house, is no ordinary bird or, or what. So the robot swift, as it implies its name, is based uh, upon the biological biology of a swift, a family of birds capable of extremely fast flight. Um, and it's been equipped with the observation cameras that might be used to either the three birds uh, or possibly surveillance human activity, which is a bit concerning. Wind tunnel tests have found that this flight remarkable bird like uh, thanks to the ability to fold its feather buckles. So I'm not quite sure what that was. So we all, <laughs> we, um, we're, coming, we're nearing the end, guys. Me stick with me. Sticky bot gecko feet help robotic uh, robot climbs. As how can a robot to climb a smooth surface like glass without using suction cups, with a, which are slow and ineffective? The secret lies within the designs of gecko's toes. Um, so they developed this sticky bot with the same type of dry adhesive that uh, lets those lizards cling to most in more, uh, smooth surfaces. So it's like this again. It's more um, with this adhesive thing, um, and it will help people like in Mission Impossible climb up glass windows. Very very spooky. So deer antlers, the this very super tough uh, material, uh, which makes the antlers of a deer so bone crushingly strong. Scientists at the University of York in the UK. Woo! When sure exactly how the moisture levels in a deer antlers affect their strength, they studied antlers that were equipped just before the stage uh, when the start, start dueling, uh, because the you know where they sh stags they shred their antlers when they don't need them and they grow them for the autumn when they're fighting other females. That's when they and they need their, them to be quite strong so they can fight them off. This dry stiff material is unusual brittle and it's easy breakable but D's antlers prove to be 2.4 times stronger than wet bone. So hopefully they can use this, um, these D antlers to help for more durable in materials in industry for like buildings. Our very last one is these be formed like bird feather colours influence optical ma materials. So these brilliant coloured feathers of the male eastern blue birds ain't created by pigments like most other colours found in nature. That is a shade of blue is actually produced by nanostructures that self-assemble in much the same way as be form. Which is nice. Essentially, they form the same way as the materials undergoing the phase separation when different substances become unstable and separate from each other. Colour producing structures in feathers start out bubbling the water inside living cells and are replaced with the air as the feather grows. These indicate optical structures which look like sponges with the air bubbles under the microscope are being used to create the new generation of optical materials in the lab. So there you go. This has been quite a long video, and I do apologise uh, for that. But there, there was um, quite a long list of things that we have to be grateful for. Thanks for, um, and I hope you keep this video in mind next time you see an animal, and you want to thank it for some of the wonderful things that have been created because of them. So please don't forget to comment, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.